Okay guys, back out on the bank. Um, nice sunny day today, I can't really see the camera so hopefully I'm in shot but um, yeah it's a bit of a sort of random one, I wasn't really sure I was coming out today. Um, at the last minute I just grabbed my gear so if we spin you around. We just brought out a couple of rods, we're just for the day, minimal gear and we're on one of the club waters. So yeah, hoping for some fish. So yeah, it's just come down for a few hours. Um, it's basically carp we're after. Um, there's, there's eels in here, which I wouldn't mind. I just, no, a bit weird, but I, I like eels and I'm after a two pounders. But early in the year, I'm hoping the little ones, because there's a lot of little ones in here. I'm hoping they leave us alone because we're on the worm kebab again. And uh, yeah, so either a nice eel or um, yeah, carp is what we're really looking at. And uh, yeah, like I said, we've got the kebab. Um, where it rings out again, exactly the same thing. If you haven't seen them in the room, my last video won't uh, show me again. And uh, yeah, just a bit of ground bait over the top. Um, we'll see how we get on. So the lake is kind of um, like a circle with a round central island. It's only narrow, as you can see. And I think most people who come here fish the, to the far bank. Um, I think that's a fair thing to say. I have done quite well under this tree here. Unfortunately, like I said, I've just I've rushed out. I didn't bring my baiting pole, which would have been better. Just get it a bit, a bit further under the tree. But, but I'm happy with the spot. It's nice and uh, chent. It's firm and stuff. And uh, yeah, and the other rod, what we've done is I've literally just put it. It was a bit choddy just in front of these here, so it's just literally six foot off the rod tip. Um, I just think it's something a bit different, like I said, most people are chucking over there or, you know, they'd be going under the, the other tree here. So I've sort of edged my bit. So there's one under the tree where, like I said, I've done well before and one just out in front. Something a bit different, a bit of ground bait over the top. See how we get on. As you can see, the pool is shallow. That swan, I don't know if it's just coincidence or not, but I've set up here and it's been up and down that margin. <laughs> at least at least a couple of times now like i said everyone chucks out that side it's uh, trying to find me bait <laughs> quick update so uh, i've had a bit of a nightmare to be honest it's seven o'clock now um, i'm debating packing up because I've just had some really heavy rain hence why the shelter's up and it's eased and it's gonna be heavy in a bit so do i stick it out for the hour chance of a fish and get almost certainly soaked or do I try and bomb it now but I might get soaked anyway by the time I back down it could be raining couldn't it so anyway we'll see I think we're gonna stick it out but yeah just had a bite I'm pretty sure it's an eel um, yeah it's starting to go dark and it's just like a twitchy take and um, yeah the lead had moved it so definitely a pickup all the worm sections are gone as well So I'm guessing it's an eel. I put the rod back out, and uh, yeah, all oh, the other thing, the swans. <laughs> it was. <laughs> I showed you it was on the other bank. It was. Um, it, I'm pretty sure it was scanning for my baits. Basically, it was looking for where I put the baits. Anyway, I'm, I'm ten minutes later, twenty minutes later. I'm sat there minding my own business, reading in preview course fishing. I look up, and the swan is right over me right hand rod. How, how it knew to come that close. And it was having none of it. it. It, it just wouldn't go away. And it was like a landing net. You normally pick up your landing net and they're gone. And it, it just wouldn't. And it was just out of reach of the landing net. And it just it knew. And it just like anyway. I just, you know I don't want to hook it basically. But yeah, it kept coming back. Yeah, it was just a nightmare. Anyway, I think they have left me alone for a bit now. So <sighs> we'll see how we get on. <sighs> Well, as you can see, I stayed the extra hour and it wasn't worth it. Oh well, everything's soaked. <laughs> so, it's the next day um, and I'm wet again. <laughs> um, I managed to get here just before it started raining, but as I was setting a bit of you, I just got a little bit wet then, but nothing uh, nothing drastic and everything's under the body now. So, <clears throat> yeah, we're back for round two. So, I'm hoping with that well, when I brought both rods in actually yesterday, there was no worms on both of them. 
clearly once it got to about seven o'clock the eels obviously kicked in so come back today i brought the worms with me as well but i've also brought some pop-ups so what i'm going to do it's going to be raining for the next um couple of hours not too heavy i'm going to put pop-ups out for now and then when it stops raining i'm going to sit with the rods and i'm just going to put the worms on i'm going to go with the worms but because i'm only lowering the baits in not really causing any disturbance i'm just going to keep recasting every 20 minutes half an hour something like that because i'm literally just lowering it in so yeah hopefully it should uh, you know should work if it's too much of a problem if the bait's coming back stripped i mean i wasn't even getting any indications which is weird i know last year when i fished on air with maggots i was at least getting the little but knocks on the bobbin and stuff so you knew something was happening uh, but yeah we've got a mixture see what we can do i have even bought me top kit i might try and fish for these little tiny eels as well with the maggots so if it stops raining so see how we get on Oh, typical. I don't know how much I got of that on footage, but we've just lost a car. <laughs> well, that pretty much sums up the two afternoon sessions, to be fair. Uh, the worm was getting stripped, so I brought that in. I've still got the pop-up under the tree. And uh, fishing single maggot, top kit, a car comes along, doesn't it? I mean, the, there must have been nearly had its back out of the water. The, the water where the spot I'm fishing is that shallow. Um, yeah, I um, hooked into it. I thought I might, I might have quite good footage actually. I had my uh, camera on, so I'll have to hopefully you might see it, might even see the car. But yeah, the inevitable happened. Hook pulled, it's only a size 16, uh, fine wire maggot hook. So, and it's not supposed to rain now, and it's raining, <laughs> it just poured a bit. Um, so yeah, so me thinking at least the bivvies got dried out of this session, and that hasn't even happened now. Right, but anyway, can all turn around. We've got two hours left, hour and a half left. Um, I'll take an eel for the species hunt, or it'd be nice to get a carp. Either way, that'd be a success, so fingers crossed. <laughs> oh, God. <laughs> just just missed a fish I'm sure it was bigger than this and then we've just had a rod so there's your blanks Eva. <laughs> two days of rain and mud well worth it <laughs> look at the size of that is that a rod or a roach <laughs> that done that well that's a bit more like it isn't it <laughs> lovely it's come out of the net I think another cracking rod wait Collars and them fins there. Lovely fish. Half a dozen rod. Was it worth it? It's going to take me about a week to clean all that. I'd say no. <laughs> oh well, we give it a go. On to the next one. So, guys, was it worth it? Uh, two afternoon sessions before rod <laughs> with all the car gear, all that mud. Um, well, you know, it's always learning, isn't it? At the end of the day, uh, we didn't we didn't catch the car we were hoping for. Tried to go for the eels. I'm pretty convinced now that 
it was the rod that were taking the worms. Um, so yeah, um, we caught some nice fish on we've learned as well. I found with my type of angling for the carp fishing, I always like I love the margins and like you know especially the you get under trees and things like that it's been, that's, that's my, my type of fishing rather than open water fishing and um, yeah I just found that this time of year it just can be a nightmare with all the twigs and stuff and when I was fishing close in there was just so many I was bringing out with that little uh, windy top section it was just like stick after stick after stick and I think because the fish haven't been sort of around those spots more they're like overwintering in the middle um, yeah um, I think that those spots just end up getting, you know, just getting covered and as the fish start moving they'll, they move all that around and, and if you like clear some more spots again but, so yeah you always take something from fishing, I hope you took something from this video, I don't really like putting a, a blank out because I do consider this a blank but yeah, anyway as usual guys, uh, tight lines in your fishing, as you can see I'm back out on the bank, um, having more success in this venue so look, f uh, look forward to getting this video out to you. And uh, yeah, tight lines in your own fishing. See you in the next one. Cheers, guys. Bye now.